Hello everybody, welcome to Idle Game Chat. This is Dimp Digital's weekly video games podcast. You've got myself, Apps, here running the operations for this week. And I'm currently joined by Mark Smith Biff. Biff, how you doing, mate? Yeah, good, thank you. Good, very well. Excellent. This is your first appearance on IGC. You are a veteran of the the aforementioned Dimp Digital podcast, which is now gone. But um, we have got some new listeners in, new people that are, that are tuning in every week. So let's get the formalities out of the way and give them a chance to get to know you. What gaming systems do you own and what are your gaming preferences, Mark Smith Biff? Uh, I've got a PS4. So that's, yep. that, that's that bit done. That's the, only, that's the only platform then. Nothing else. That's nothing else. And uh, just... I don't know. I'm normally quite uh, just someone who goes for like the big, the big hitters. Right. So the Grand Theft Autos and anything with yeah. a good uh, story, so like The Last of Us. Yeah. yeah. You know those those sort of games. Is it mainly uh, single player stuff or campaign stuff that you're interested in? Yeah, mainly campaign. I, I used to do. I used. To, I like a co-op campaign, but yeah. they sort of killed that. It's died a death recently. <laughs> There's not been many games on uh. the new new consoles with co-op campaigns but yeah i'm not really that big into multiplayer i'll just rather to sit there on my own and just rot than, yeah uh, it's, socialize it's far it's far easier so a co-op campaign a good example of that was gears of war wasn't it on the yeah. old, on the old xbox now that that's going to be circulating and coming out later this year do you, do you think you'll ever not i mean you probably won't even consider buying one but do you think you're going to miss not being able to go through that in a co-op like because like you said there's not actually a great deal out there these days that do co-op campaigns no, I've been. I've, it depends what the game's like. If I speak to you and you say it's fantastic, I mean, Gears One, Two, and Three were really good, and we yep. went through all those together, didn't we? But the fourth one, I've got was Judgment. Judgment. Yeah, that's that it. was tack. So if this one follows in that sort of step, then I won't be bothered at all, and I'll be. I've made the right decision to throw my Xbox away. Yeah, that is. So have you not even got the 360 anymore? Or is it just sitting there collecting dust? No, the 360 gets sold. I only have one console at a time. I'm not one of these people <laughs> that hoards consoles. As soon as one comes in, the other one departs. Departs. How did you how did you make your decision going from Xbox to to PlayStation? Like you said, you spent a good sort of probably about six years with the 360. In the end, it was a long old generation, and then a lot of people like yourself did jump over to PlayStation. Well, the main reason was, um, as anyone who knows me, I really like The Last of Us. Yeah. Uh, I was bored one day and I sold my Xbox 360 and bought a PS3 just to play The Last of Us because I thought it looked really good. Yeah. And then I ever thought, if they make a Last of Us 2 and I haven't got a PS4, I'm up shit creek without a paddle. So <laughs> I thought, just go PS4 and then that way all You're bases covered. covered. Yeah, exactly. All bases were covered indeed. And uh, we've got the remastered version coming out. No sign of a Last of Us 2, but I'm sure they're working on that and we did get uncharted 4 which we'll speak about a little bit in a minute what i, what I brought you on here really was just to, a to introduce you so that you're, you're around for future episodes and people know roughly who you are and also to kind of compile a list of top five games in 2016 so far we are over halfway in the year and to my maybe not my surprise but I've, you can only come up with two so <laughs> Before miserable we, Biff. miserable Biff, back at it. Before we discuss those, you know, in detail, and probably one of them we won't discuss in detail because we've done a whole separate segment on it, and it is Uncharted Four, uh, Thief's End. So little spoiler there. But wh- what do you think's going on here? Only two games in 2016 that have been purchased this year, uh, and we're here at the end of July. What's going on there? I don't know. I mean, it doesn't help me obviously because I've only got a. PS4, so yeah. I don't I miss out on some titles, some exclusives, but I don't think there's been many on the Xbox or PC that have really passed me by mm. off the top of my head. But uh, yeah, there's not really just there's just not been a lot out that's really interested me. Um, mm. Yeah, basically that's that's the main reason. I mean, you I know you mentioned Overwatch, but I don't really like multiplayer. That was no. quite a big game, but that's not for me. No. Um, so yeah, there's not really big big many games that come out this year. No, no, not for your preferences anyway. So yeah, exactly. The, the two games you picked out that had, had released this year was Uncharted 4, unsurprisingly. Um, like I said, I'm going to be putting this our segment at the end of this podcast, so that it'll be uh, what I call the gaming lounge. It's an area for us to discuss the games with spoilers, essentially. So we'll save the bulk of the chat for that and obviously if you want to listen and you've already played Uncharted then it'll be good for you to listen to that if you haven't played it you know if you if you are worried about spoilers then then don't bother but it'll come at the very end of the podcast after the uh, the music has played so you can just skip over that if you're not interested towards the end you're not going to be missing anything out really other than Uncharted 4 um, but just quickly sum up Uncharted 4 or Thief's End 4 because it was 
you know, when it first came out, and when we when we did discuss it, we was gushing over it. Are those thoughts still there with you? Do you still have that same opinion, or has it waned slightly since release, and you've had time to reflect on it? No, it's still. I mean, it's in the top five games I've probably played on PS4, and it's the best looking game I've ever played. I mean, yeah. it, it raised the bar as far as I mean, we say this in the podcast, but yeah. um, it, it raised the bar as far as graphics were concerned because there's been nothing like it. But it was a fantastic game, and it is, you know, I'd be surprised if that doesn't win sort of game of the year this year yeah. from all, all the people that played it on Dimp Digital I would be surprised because it, it was fantastic yeah I've not got many hardly anything bad to say about it it was a, a great game and it's Naughty Dog again the guys from behind The Last of Us which they, they seem to be tr- tried and tested pedigree now and every time they release something big you're going to always have a look at it regardless of whether it's Uncharted or The Last of Us it seems that they've got it in their locker to, to produce good games next game this is the second and only one was Doom which I think was a bit of a surprise hit with people. I was really not expecting this to be much good at all from what I'd seen and what I'd played in the online beta. But there's actually a decent campaign there. I'm probably about five hours in, um, and I've, so I've not quite near finishing it yet. But you've actually played it through to completion. What was your thoughts on Doom? I thought it was fantastic. I mean, I never played sort of any of the originals. No. But obviously, I knew, I, you, you know, anyone that was born, you know, around the 1980s, ni- late 80s, early 90s, knew about doom and everything about it it's like a big big yeah. thing isn't it yeah. but um yeah i thought it was fantastic i mean it's absolute carnage from start to finish i mean <laughs> you just literally turn the game on and you pick up a gun within five seconds of yeah the campaign starting and then from then on you don't look back mm. um so yeah i thought it was just I, I was quite surprised how much i enjoyed it yeah yeah i, I think one of the things that surprised me is it is, it is non-stop action pretty much but it, it's got some good progression there like you upgrade your suit you can upgrade your weapons and it's got a little bit more depth than I was expecting. It kind of keeps things fresh by introducing you new weapons every couple of levels and then new upgrades and whatnot. And there's always new enemies, it seems. It seems like they're yeah, constantly yeah. pushing you with new enemies, stronger enemies, and you're working towards, you know, a, a part parts of the game where it is just, just, just complete chaos. I was also surprised, or I've been surprised so far, at the how big the map was. Yeah, there's, yeah. There is loads of secrets and... And different bits and bobs hidden away that you can you can go and grab. Have you been partaking in any of that, or have you just been going? Did you gun straight through it? And, and... No, no, I did. There was a few sections where I had to. I was getting the shit kicked out of me, so I was like, right, the oh, yeah. secrets can leave. Um, <laughs> but a lot of the time, yeah, I was I was roaming around having a quick look because it does help you out in the campaign, and you do unlock new bits for your guns and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So, yeah, I was having a wander around and exploring. Um, but yeah, it is a lot bigger. I, I mean. Like you say, I think every every part, every element of the game, I sort of um, underestimated. Like you say, yeah. so the the gameplay, I underestimated. The the graphics are pretty good. The the yeah. size of the maps, the the you know the difference of guns. You know, there's yeah. quite a vast array, the vast array of enemies. Like you say, so yeah, it was underestimated from start to finish. I thought, and yeah. uh, it was a pleasant surprise. Yeah, that definitely does help when you go into a game kind of not expecting much because you it's you're easier to impress, and when it when it is a nice impression. You know, it's always a good feeling. You think, oh, I'm glad I picked that up. And I think it's it's one that people shouldn't miss if they have done already. It's the, the price of it. It's quite low. I've seen it for 25, 20 quid at the moment. It's definitely worth it at that price. And I've, I said, I've only played about five, six hours. So um, it's, a, it's a great game and it's certainly a good job well done there. There was a lot of people worried that it was going to tarnish or ruin the franchise. And I think it's brought some elements of the old game in and, and, and they blended it with new stuff and it's worked really well. So... You know, Doom, the 2016 version, is definitely high on my list as well for what I've been playing for this year. We're then going to take a look forward into what is coming out for the rest of this year, like almost like we did with Mr. Adkins last week, and ask for five titles there. You did pick um, some different titles here, which is always good, otherwise I would have been a bit of a blowout discussing the, the same games <laughs> over and over again. Although, actually, one of the things that interested me was I asked for five games and you, you as usual you always have to change the rules you never quite follow the my instructions and you gave me Maverick. an item yeah Maverick sort of always like that yeah beefy but, um, <laughs> PlayStation VR let's start there that is not a game that is a that is you know a, a game changer some people might say that is on pre-order for you that is your birthday Christmas and everything else rolled into one it seems that you're getting you're gonna get it on release it's yeah yeah I mean I knew it wasn't a game, but there's so many games that come with it, and I yeah. thought I can't sort of I can't um, name one of those games because I don't know what it will yeah. be like until I put the VR headset on. Yeah. So I thought just put PSVR, and then everyone knows what I mean, don't they? There's no confusion there with anyone. No. So what's 
what is it that dragged you into this? Was it? I know we, we last year we went to EGX and you, you only attended one day because you got the arsehole in the second <laughs> and didn't bother coming. But we all had an appointment booked with with PlayStation VR, apart from Logan, who, who didn't get a slot. Um, it seemed like immediately after you'd played that, you played London Heist and you were just sold on it there and then. You, you, you was like, I'm getting this, whatever happens. I mean, I was, I, I've never, ever played, I mean, I remember being like a kid mm. and like going into an arcade with my dad and playing like Time Crisis and being blown yeah. away that I could shoot a gun. And it was like that same sort of feeling. I was like, yeah. I've never, you know, it was, you know, just incredible. I felt so involved and I come out and I was like, my hands are really sweaty. And I was like, oh, <laughs> this is <laughs> like, I proper got the adrenaline pumping. You know? It was incredible. Yeah. And uh, to me, that's, you know, that's what getting the game's all about. It's meant to, it's like watching a film. It's meant to sort of take you through, yeah. take you out your sort of sitting. So you don't know you're sitting in a lounge and you sort of lose that bit for a moment. And this was not, nothing else, like yeah. nothing else. So yeah, that's the main reason. Yeah. So you didn't know you was, you was around ejects of all music pumping out and people screaming and shouting. You was, you was in London Heights for those yeah, absolutely. 10, 15 uh, minutes. I mean, the, the you get the two PS controllers and on yeah. one part of it, you have to, um, you hold a gun in one p- so you're looking at your hands and you're holding the gun and you're yep. holding a magazine and I put the magazine into the gun and I actually dropped my PS controller because <laughs> he because then your hand becomes empty in the game so as I put the magazine in I then open my hand up and I was like oh shit and the geezer had to grab my arm and then put my, the PS controller back in because I was so convinced that these little fat hands that were my a, hands that is amazing that is amazing that is that is incredible. Did it actually hit the floor? Did it, the, the move control or did it? No, it, it, hit, it hit my leg. No, oh. it hit my leg and that. Oh god, yeah, that is but, that's incredible, isn't it? The immersion there that you just immediately let go of it. Thinking, yeah, oh, yeah. I don't need that anymore. Then you yeah. say also you was like filling around the glove box and stuff, and you was like getting stuff out and all sorts. Yeah, you, there's like cans of coke you can get out, and that I, uh, you know, it, it's just it's just fantastic. It really was. I was so blown away by it, and I can't wait because I know you went on it and you didn't play a game that was in, oh. involved. Yeah, yeah. It's basically it was the kitchen, which is like the prototype almost for Resident Evil 7, it seems. And yeah, I just, I didn't think it was very good. Having played a, a game where you kind of got more hands-on before, I was like, that's a really disappointing demo for me because it, it, it just didn't quite work. But I, w- I really wanted to play London Heist and I was wondering whether it was going to be there because that certainly looked like that. Although it was a little bit gimmicky in what it's doing, it's, it's giving you the full experience almost of what VR can do because you're moving things with your hands, you're aiming, you're shooting, and you've got the headset on. Um, whereas I was just sitting there in a chair I thought, right, yeah, yeah, this is not good enough. Well, when when I get it, you'll come around and I'll guarantee you'll think about getting one after you play it. I can <laughs> I can nearly guarantee it. It was that good. That's yeah. how that's how convinced I am. Are there are there any concerns? And these are only just these are all unfounded rumours, more scaremongering for me really. Are there any concerns that at some point you'll have to upgrade to one of these phantom PlayStation Four Neos to get the most out of your your PlayStation VR headset? Yeah, I mean that is. That um, yeah, that is a concern, but it's also a concern slash inevitability. So right. with technology, anyone who buys technology knows that as soon as you buy technology, it's old technology, then, isn't it? Yeah, sure. So you, um, you're not worried about doing. It. You'll, you'll you'll be looking to probably do that naturally, would you? Have anyway, if, if, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you know, I would yeah. in my head, I'd be sitting there thinking, I could this could look better than what it is. I'm trying even to if, look even better in Neo mode. Exactly, but I could be playing like a PS2 game on my PS4 on like the PS sort of online and be thinking, Oh, this could look better on a PS4 plus yeah. or whatever. You know, yeah. it's just how my mind sees. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like you said, you can always bin off the old console, trade it in, try and recoup some money. So we're still no details on there, which I'm shocked about, but we'll, we'll see what happens with that. That's PlayStation VR. It's definitely, you know, a, a good thing to have on there. It does create discussion. You'll probably want, you'll probably be one of the first people to have one of those within the dim quarters. The only person I can think of, maybe Mr. Salmon, he's toying with getting a vibe for his PC, but that's a big, you know, step price wise for him, a sort of 600 pound jobby. Whereas you've got yours on pre-order that will be arriving October the 13th. And I'll be unless, the first person round. <clears throat> unless my other half's fucked it. And then <laughs> she's got you an old Nintendo. Like, yeah, yeah. I can't remember they were called Virtual Boy. I think they were called. So, oh, I thought that was cheap. <laughs> Kept harping on about how it's, how it's both presents. Go, well, it's not. Yeah, I think that's a, you know, you've got it in pre-order now. I can't see them making a mess of it. So unless she's messed it up, then you should be fine there. But not too far away. You know, a little bit. it's coming in a busy month as well, October. When you look at what's being released there, that is that is a busy old month. Just before we come off, actually, what do you actually want from the PlayStation VR? Do you want you're going to start off with a lot of short games? You're going to start off with small experiences. There's a there's even I've seen there's a Star Wars Battlefront exclusive coming to PlayStation VR. Going forward in the future, do you want a game like Uncharted or another or like big 
you know, blockbuster games to appear on the SA up to 15 hours long? Or do you think that's going to be a bit too much for it? Uh, that's a good question. I don't really know, to be honest. Um, yeah, I mean, the only thing I don't want is to have a game like Heists, say London Heists. Yeah. It'd be 55 quid, and in four hours it's done. Right. That's sure. what I don't want. I'd rather them put out a 55 quid game and have six or seven short little games in it that are all different, if that made sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, a 15, 20 hour campaign, that, that would be good. I, I can't imagine me sitting there and playing it. Um, but I think, you know, like I've said it before, where I don't think they'll go down the path of doing Uncharted. They'll have to change the way that you sort of play a game because it's a different way of playing. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, I think, and this is what I read a long time ago, and someone can correct me, but I think London Heist is is part of this PlayStation VR Worlds or something. It's like a game, almost like a starter pack that has that game and, and say, eight others in there. Yeah, I yeah. think yeah, you don't think you have to worry too much about London Heist in particular being fifty five quid. I think you're about to pick that for a reasonable price. But I get what you mean. Other games is a bit of a worry if they start charging a lot for it. And it is you know not a you know what you call a complete experience. But you get that these days with, with some games anyway. You'd argue that some AAA games that are eight hours and you think mm, that's still fifty quid. Well, this is the problem. I mean, they're, they're robbing bastards these games companies. <laughs> and if you've paid three hundred and fifty quid for a, a VR headset, or they know you're going to buy it. <laughs> yeah, they know you're going to buy it. You're not going to sit there and go, nope, I'll wait till that comes down in price and just sit here <laughs> doing nothing with it. So you know they've got you by the, the bollocks, really. But we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Exactly. Let's move on to your last four games. So we've got on here. Rise of the Tomb Raider for PlayStation 4. This is one that you were heartbroken at missing out on last year because it was a, a timed Xbox One exclusive. I had played it through on the Xbox One. But to be fair, it's quite a prudent decision to have waited for it because the, the October the 11th release will be called Rise of the Tomb Raider 20-Year Celebration. And it's going to come with a new story chapter, co-op endurance mode, a little co-op there, uh, su- support for the PlayStation VR Um and uh, a few other bits as well where you can go into the Croft Manor and explore around. I think that's part of the VR experience. So they've actually added quite a lot to the game. It'll come with all the DLC that was you know, out previously. So it's basically, you know how you get these Game of the Year editions that come out. It's yeah, that. Yeah, it's basically that, yeah. Yeah, a few extras in it, which I think is good because I think PS4 owners would have been a little bit stiffed if it was just the, the base game and they're still charging 50 quid for it. But now they've added all this in and the PlayStation VR has got to be a plus point for you. Yeah, I'm quite happy about that. I was a bit miffed while they'd done it, really, and only on Xbox, because bearing in mind that Tomb Raider was like a PS... Well, back like in what, the day, yeah. Yeah, it made yeah. the PS1 what it was, really. Mm. Um, one of the biggest releases on it. So, yeah, I was a bit miffed while they'd done that, but, you know... I don't I'm think gonna... they'll do that again, is what would be my prediction. I can't see how that they've... I don't think they sold as many as they thought they would. They backed the wrong horse, essentially. When you look at... If you want to back the Xbox or the PS4, in that sense... Yeah, yeah. Don't PS... go Xbox. <laughs> no, not at the moment. Because the, the install base is lower, for one. And yeah, it's, uh, I think that was a bit of a mistake. But it's coming after Uncharted 4, and there's been comparisons made to these two games. I've been guilty of doing that in the past. They are they are quite different games. They do share a lot of similarities in terms of their 3D platforming. Any worries that this is just going to be a blowout because you'll be thinking, ah, not as good as Uncharted 4? Uh, yeah, I suppose that that you know that could be a bit of a worry, but I think when you pick up a game, a lot of the time, I mean, it's I know it is hard to not compare it, but you just have to sort of come yeah. come out of a fresh sort of perspective. But the thing is, with Uncharted, like I say, it's probably the game of the year. So yeah. if it if it's like ten or fifteen or twenty percent worse than that, it's still going to be a really good game. Do you know yeah. what I mean? But I just have to sort of take it with a pinch of salt. Yeah, I see. So that's October the eleventh for Rise of the Tomb Raider. We then move on. So quite a surprising one, well, not maybe not a surprising one, but Batman Telltale series. So that's actually, you know, a couple of days away, really, August the 2nd. So we are literally on top of that as we speak. What's your, yeah. ex- what's your experience with Telltale? I know you're a big fan of Batman because you loved all the Arkham games and, and whatnot, and you was looking forward to the, the, the Arkham remaster, wasn't you, that got delayed, yeah. which has got a new release date now. But um, Telltale in particular, what's your experience with them? Because I, I believe... I kind of talked you into buying The Walking Dead Season 1 and you got it on a mobile device and that's one of the only experiences you've had with it. Yeah, that is. That's that is basically, it. That's it. something you've summed it up for me. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, but I played the season, uh, Walking Dead Season 1 on your recommendation and I did enjoy it. Um, like I said, I used to do it on the train on the way up to work and just come to work shaking, just being like, oh, I've just had to <laughs> fucking kill a child. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and I, I don't know why, but I never really... I played uh, a little bit of The Wolf Among Us. I think yeah. I played the first couple of bits on that. Yeah. 
but uh, something happened and it got chucked in the bin. Um, so yeah, but with Batman and that combined, I think that's quite a good combination. Cause like you say, I like Batman yeah. and, uh, see what the storytelling is like and Telltale, you know, they sort of do, although it's not like, um, an involved, well, it is, you do get involved in the story, but it's not like a, a game. I would say it's more like a film that you're sort of involved in and you can change mm. decisions and things. Yeah. I think it'd be quite interesting to see how they sort of cross those two over. Yeah, I mean, it is uh, is an interesting take on it. It's one of the, another licensed property they've got. You mentioned you played The uh, Walking Dead on mobile. Is this going to be a mobile game for you again, or are you going to go and opt for a, a console digital download or a PS4 digital? Uh, I'll probably get it on the phone again, Yeah, because uh, I thought I quite enjoyed it, and uh, playing it on the way to work and that, it gave me something to do. Um, and then plus, I've, when it's on the console, it just logs up a lot of your memory, and it, you know... <laughs> That's that, that's that premium, isn't it? That's yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's not. It's not that important on, to me to be stored on there. But like you say, yeah, it's at a premium memory at the moment, and it ain't. It's not that bothered by it. No, fair enough. So that's Batman, the Telltale series, going to be episodic as per usual. <laughs> Apparently, you spend a lot more time uh, controlling Bruce Wayne and not the Caped Crusader. So it's going to have an interesting take on that. And I'm, I, you know, I like Batman. I'm not really overly into it. But um, I'm certainly going to get it because it's, you know, it's a bit of telltale. I'll, I'll pretty much buy anything they'll they'll get and put out these days. So that's that's one for me as well. August the second, that's a days away from that. So we'll definitely be looking at that one. The Last Guardian, 28th of October. How's this made it on there? Is this just from other people's hype that it's been in development for eight years or whatever, and you think, well, it's got to be good if it's been sitting there that long? Yeah, basically that is it again. Um, I just I've heard so many people talk about it, and then I played. What was the other one that was on? Uh, Ico and Shadow of the Colossus. I think you played Shadow of the Colossus. Yeah, I played. I played some of Shadow of the Colossus, and it yeah. was. Uh, it wasn't fantastic, but I was playing it on a PS4, and you have to remember the games like it was like ten years old. I think it was, or even more. Well, it was than a PS2 game originally, so yeah. It's... Yeah, um, but I was blown away that I was thinking, oh my god, if I'd have played this on PS2, I would have like fucking shit myself like it would have been yeah. insane um so yeah i played through some of that and i thought well hopefully this will be sort of same sort of thing hopefully this might be like the next big thing on on ps4 yeah. so yeah it, but basically it's just the hype i've not really done that much research into it i've seen some little girl wandering around with a massive dog with wings chasing her um <laughs> it's a but, bloke it's a boy is it a boy well yeah. it's a feminine looking boy let's put it that way but um yeah so that's that's basic. Like I say, I don't really know a lot about it, but that's on there because I, I think that could be one of the big games because everyone's harping on about it. So we will see. Yeah, I think it will. I think I'll enjoy it, but I think it'll. I don't think it'll do well review wise for some reason. I just think it'll struggle. There'll be too much hype for it. People will want to love it, but they want me to see part. I think there's going to be parts of it where they think, hmm, feels like a PS3 game here, where it originally was. You know, it was originally scheduled to come on that. And I can't help but think that something in development that long must have had some pretty big problems for it to get <laughs> to this stage where it's coming out in 2016 and it was revealed about nine years ago. Yeah. Uh, but we'll see. I'm, I'll, I'll be getting it and I'm optimistic for it. It's gonna. I don't think it's going to be a long game. I think it's going to be eight hours and again, people will be like, Ooh, it's not good enough. It's got to be longer. But if I look at it, if it, if it ties up the story nicely in those eight hours and it fits well and it's nicely paced and I'm all for that, I don't need every game to be 30 hours. I haven't got time for them all. <laughs> Too much shit sitting here at the moment getting in the way last one on here this is an interesting one the bioshock collection coming 13th of september 2016 and the reason i say this is interesting it's not most people think well that's a fair shout but you actually played through bioshock one and maybe two i don't remember now on playstation now backwards yeah. sort of streaming device what on earth are you getting this for again uh i played through Bioshock One, I didn't get another. I didn't get a chance to go for Bioshock Two. Yeah. But I just Bioshock is probably one of my probably best games, probably top five games ever. Right. Um, I love it. It's. I was so blown away by it when I first played it, and even though I played it on PS4 on PS3, I still. It's so fantastic that whole. I've never seen such an imaginative world put into a game. Just. Mm. I know it sounds really cheesy, but I just. I, I really like that sort of the 1950s look oh, but yeah, under underwater yeah. it was just such a i've never seen anything like it and it was so fucked up as well <laughs> it really was um and it was just everything about it i really enjoyed everything and i enjoyed bioshock 2 as well mm. um i wasn't a big fan of the third one. Oh, come on i know you really like that but is that included in the bioshock <laughs> Yeah, I think so. I think it's all yeah. three of them. Yeah, I think that is. Let me. I'm going to double check, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that is all three of them. Yeah, it is all three of them. Um, so you'll get 
the, the trilogy essentially there. So yeah, I can go through that again. I might even change my mind on it. But I'm yeah, I much, so. much preferred the, the first two to the third one. I'm shocked that you preferred the second one over the third one, just because um, by the time it got to the second one for me, I played Bioshock 1, thought it was great, and this just felt like a very... It's, it felt like a sequel, like a typical sequel. There wasn't a lot they'd done to change it. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's always still in Rapture, wasn't it? Whereas Infinite was a completely different setting. And I must admit, to be fair, when I first played Infinite, I hated it for about five hours. Like, I, was, I was like, this is really average. But something clicked halfway through. I started using the sniper rifle, I think, all of a sudden. And from then on, I was like, wow, this is actually you know, incredible. So, yeah, <laughs> that... that that was my favourite out of the three, and it would be, you know, that would be debated long amongst the Bioshock fans. But, um, you know, it was a great series in its time. Fantastic series. Brand new IP as well back in the day. Um, and you're going to get to play through all three of these and remastered full 1080p, 60 frames per second. That's going to be great for you to go through that again. How did it, how did it hold up on the streaming PlayStation now? Because I've, I've played a couple of games on it, and it's been a bit spotty. For me. Yeah, this was it was a bit shit in places. It looked it it sort of lagged and some of it looked really blurry. Mm. Um, so yeah, some sometimes I wasn't that impressed by it, but uh, over, I mean it was okay. It was yeah. it was okay. Yeah, yeah. I might I want to give that a go and play through Shadow of the Colossus actually. So that'll be my next venture on PlayStation now. But it can get quite expensive if you don't keep an eye on it. I think if you leave that thing running for too much too many too much longer, then you absolutely get stung out of it. Right, mate. Anything else you want to clear up before you leave for for another couple of months? We'll definitely be having you back on in the future, whether it's for PlayStation VR or anything that's, else. But... That's when I'll get dragged out the the closet again. Yeah, um, reanimate him. Yeah, or if, if actually, I mean, I'm sure I read there's going to be Uncharted single player DLC, but I have no idea when that's coming. So that's another sort of marker there. I'm hoping they're still oh, right. planning to do that. But um, I think basically they saw what The Last of Us did with Left Behind. It kind of was a different take and it was, you know, well received. So I can see them doing it again. They did say yeah. that originally they did say it's going to be part of it, but we completely we'll have to see. But it'll be PlayStation VR. It'll be something to do with Uncharted, or, you know, maybe Last Guard and whatever. But we'll get you back on to talk about it. But that's it now, Biff. Your sentence is up. Thank you for joining me on this particular segment of the podcast. We will speak again soon. No, not going to say bye. Bye. We now welcome the webmaster Chappers into the fold here at IGC. Welcome to the show, my man. Hello. Excellent. So you are our webmaster at Dimp Digital, aren't you? You built the website and the app that we currently use and is being downloaded by the millions and millions <laughs> of fans out there. But this is your, your debut here on Idle Game Chat. So let's do the necessary. What gaming platforms do you currently own and do you have any preferences as to what you're playing usually sure so i'm uh i'm a mostly master race now i guess yeah um, we bought a new um, one didn't you not long ago yeah the beginning of the year right around springtime and then uh i've got a wii u that likes to gather dust as well <laughs> um i think most people's do unfortunately especially at this time of year where they've yeah. stopped releasing stuff so it's to be expected yep and then um yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm back on Civ again. All right. <laughs> I've done another 50 hours since we last spoke. and uh, Oh, dear. Civ 5, yeah, we're talking yeah, this about. Yeah, I'm getting ready for Civ 6 now, the big the big change. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm into the kind of um, our previous blogs have been about kind of uh, Linux gaming as well and trying to, yeah. trying to get away from the Windows box. Yeah, yeah, because you're not a, really a fan of a Windows box, really. You want to try something different, but I think you were saying that the restrictions on what you could play and the fiddle factor were a bit of a, a bit of a pain in the ass, weren't they? Really? Yeah, that's right. I, I ditched my Xbox at the beginning of the year and switched yeah. back over to that, and uh, I definitely don't miss the Xbox. But mm-hmm. I kind of it's the lesser of two evils now, having to deal with Windows. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, sometimes I still kind of get to put my Ubuntu hat on and yeah. play some Linux games and. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think the, the the one that I can't get enough of at the minute, I'm just constantly inviting people around, is to play Gang Beasts. I just yeah, can't. Yeah, it's a it. great game. Yeah, and um, yeah, so I kind of like the party games as well, like um, Keep Talking or Everybody Explodes as yeah, well. Yeah, um, great games. Is yeah. um is Gang Beasts still in early access or is it? Yes. Now? Yeah. Yeah, and it can it can be frustrating as well still. Right. Yeah. Uh, but as an as an actual kind of 
premise of a game is just genius. Yeah, no, I, I've had a go on a very early alpha version, which you can download for free. Um, if you look hard enough, there's a there's a link with all like you know very early access games where the, the developers are happy for people to play those builds. It was just a single player kind of tutorial, but and and there's a few computer controlled characters, but straight away I just felt the physics were really nice and it just looked like great fun to play with other people. I've seen countless videos on the YouTube about things like that as well. Now going back to uh, we talked about Windows actually, we spoke about Windows quite a lot as of late. You mentioned you sold your Xbox and you, you're not really missing it. Another factor that comes into that is, you know, what appears to be Xbox's at least short-term strategy of releasing any of their exclusives on the on the Windows platform anyway. So you're actually probably not going to miss out on a great deal not having the Xbox. Yeah, I know. I, was, I mean, that was announced after after I sold my Xbox. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it it's the, definitely an extra an extra kind of interest for me. If I'm honest. Um, it's. I still try and stay away from the Windows Store anyway because yeah. I just feel like I'm getting sucked in. Uh, there's almost a bit of gamification about it as well. Like I'm a bit, I'm a bit like Hall again, where with the with the achievement points, I like my Steam achievements and uh, right, okay. I like having everything in one place. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, it being interesting if there's a really good game coming along, but yeah, none of them are really blowing me away at the minute. No, that is that is the problem with them. They seem to be stuck in a rut of having very very similar um franchises and old tired franchises just rolling out every couple of years yeah and it's not enough really at this level i mean i actually to be fair i played inside all the way through i mean that's that's not an exclusive as per se it's an indie you know game but it's only on the xbox one at the moment and that was a good crack uh play dead games the makers of limbo so when that comes to other platforms i encourage other people to play that as well looking at the rest of 2016 so you mentioned civilization 6 is there any other kind of titles on the horizon? I can think of one that I've, I think you might be interested in, and it begins with a an N. Yeah, yeah, the the, the most talked about game of the year, I think, apart well, from Pokemon Go so far. Yeah. Um, yeah, No Man's Sky looks great. I can't wait for that. Yeah. Um, and uh, I can't really think of anything else, if I'm honest. No, no. I mean, it's a lot of them are kind of third party AAA franchises almost There's yeah there's something called recall coming out on the xbox one also in windows 10 which is new but there's not a lot of new stuff coming out as of late it's all uh it's all like third and fourth entries of franchise we had on last gen almost yeah and logan's gone big on recall hasn't he that's one of his yeah. selected games so i'm kind of dubious about that if i'm honest <laughs> yeah well that is that is giving it the kind of the death stamp isn't it if he's, yeah. if he's picked it for although to be fair other than picking mass effect he would have been doing he would have been up there in the runnings but having a, a non-starter in the fantasy league has really cost him and to be fair that's going to be a 90 percent game anyway he's yeah. just been strong hasn't he but yeah uh... They probably could have won it then if that was coming out this year or if it was extended. But he could still beat Hall, and Hall's got all of his picks coming out. I mean, oh yeah, that's that. That'll, that'll be an embarrassment for Hall. Let's just say that for for sure. What is it about No Man's Sky that is is interesting you? Because I know you're um you'd like to get your head into how games are also developed, not just the playing through them. You like the the tech behind this game as well, don't you? Yeah, I've, I've I kind of loved the the small development team it's worked on. Yeah, uh, Halo games and. Um, yeah, the kind of the super algorithm that they've written to kind of make the uh, procedurally generated universe, and yeah, and it's another one of it's kind of like how you talked about Pokemon Go, yeah, um, where there's no instructions as such, you're just kind of given yeah. the game and you explore it how you will. I kind of feel that's how No Man's Sky is going to be as well, yeah, um, there's going to be guys going in there as hunters and just blowing everything up, and there'll be other guys just going around searching stuff and yeah people logging all their ex, their ex you know their findings and whatnot because you can upload it onto that's it, a yeah. network of all some name bits and bobs we've got a, a a release date of august the 9th in north america on ps4 august the 10th in europe and then strangely enough august the 12th on uh on windows platforms so i don't know what that's all about but there's there was a, like a three-day delay that came in a you know a week or so back it's worth mentioning that for people that are going to get it on pc like yourself I just, um, I just got a burst of excitement and I didn't realise how close that was. I think we, time's absolutely flown by this summer. So, yeah, that's like 11 days away, right? Yeah, it's not it's not far at all. We are So next week will kind of be our, our big preview to that and then it will be out that week. It will be out, yeah. and, you know, wow. two days after that, it'll pe- people will be playing it. And, you know, if you've got any holiday saved up, those that are interested, I think now's the time to, to be doing it. Although I did, I think, 
because it was delayed, Piper is away during the release window, yeah, so he, 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 he can't play it on day one. That's going to really hurt him. I don't I've, know got, if I've got paternity leave coming up. I'm not <laughs> sure if that's going to work or not, so uh, <laughs> we'll have to see. Exactly, exactly. You mentioned Pokemon Go, and yeah. we've it has become a weekly kind of subject just to dip into and see how people are getting on. Now, you were kind of ha- I hand-picked you for this week because we've had two weeks of reasonably positive me and adkins and then dave salmon before that who had played it before it was officially released in the uk because you're one of the very few dimp members who just it just didn't seem to get on with pokemon go no it kind of um i was excited when it was first coming out and i i mean we've completely switched switched sides on it as well you were quite yeah before it was coming out and i was like oh, this is going to be the biggest thing since sliced bread yeah and um, well, it's, 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 it's biggest things it's size played almost. It is, it's not, yeah. not wrong there. And um, I just it just felt like I played it before. Unfortunately, I, I was quite big on Ingress. Well, yeah, but, that is that is one of the criticisms that people that had played a lot of Ingress that it is all you know it's a reskinning of that technology almost, just in a different. It's not as good as Ingress, if right? I'm and do you uh, mean not as good as in not as fun to play, or just not as stable, or is it? Is that? Is it both things? I'll, I can't. I'll kind of ignore the the, the stability of it because yeah. it's. I don't think anyone imagined how successful it was going to be. No. And, and if you kind of put forward, you know, having that many servers on a release of a new app, yeah, they'd be like you're bonkers. We ain't doing that. Yeah. So, <laughs> so um, I kind of ignore that part of it. Okay. But I find Ingress was. Um, for me, was more addictive to play, and it, it, it felt like it had more of an end game, even though it's not really got an end game as such. But you can link portals up, and yeah. you're constantly battling with people. You can put shields on your portals. Yeah. Whereas with Pokemon, it feels like you just kind of go around farming, farming, farming. Yeah. You might get lucky, and then you just walk up to someone's gym and bash them up, and then you've got the gym, and then someone does the opposite to you. There's no like strategy in there as such yeah no i would definitely agree with those sentiments just for those that haven't heard of or played ingress because a lot of people out there that are not even aware that niantic had made this game beforehand can you give like a a layman's kind of explanation for what ingress is and how it worked on the on the old mobiles yeah sure so it's very much the same as pokemon in the fact it's a location augmented reality game right yeah and um the idea with it is that um they're trying to mind track you and they're using like uh, landmarks and places of interest to yeah. kind of try and take control. So one of you's like the enlightened and the other one's kind of trying to defend people's minds and you go around hacking right. the portals, yeah. ensure each team's, um, you know, trying to get most portals for your team. Um, and there's whole kind of law behind it. And I've, I'm definitely not an expert in it, but it's, it's um, you get like weekly emails with different reports and yeah. Um, yeah so it's kind of, it feels so much bigger than Pokemon Go at the minute, but obviously there's been a lot more, um, a lot more time put into it so far. But yeah, yeah, you can even add new landmarks and stuff like that. Um, okay. And all of the landmarks in Ingress are the Pokestops. In okay, so the, the same. This is the same. It's literally the same locations they pulled. Yes. Yeah. Slapped. So I'm pretty sure if you it. add a landmark to Ingress within a couple of weeks, it'd be on. Pokemon. So if you've got a nice big road sign saying like <laughs> London outside your house, yeah. in ingress, and you have a pokey stuff outside your house, I'm, I'm pretty certain that would happen. So <laughs> it might be. It could be feeding off of that. That's for sure. Yeah. So did um back in the day, I've got to ask this question: Was you ever a Pokemon fan to start with? Had you played the old Game Boy ones? Did you ever watch the show? Because you're a little bit older than myself, and that it come at the time that Pokemon arrived in the UK at a time when I just started, I think secondary school. And the cards are really big. The TV show was really big. And obviously the Game Boy game was, was big as well. And I got it sucked into that. So this is almost like a flashback to those times. It, it brings back the same feelings when I see some of the Pokemon that I hadn't seen in, you know, 20 years almost. Yeah. coming And you see and you think, oh, it's really nostalgic. Is that something that you ever had with Pokemon? Or was that, were you no, never really def- into it? Definitely not, actually. Yeah. I, maybe that's the problem. I played Ingress yeah. a lot. I got used to the lore on that a little bit, and then I'm going into Pokemon, which is completely like new to me as such. I mean, I, I played Pokemon Stadium, but only the multiplayer games in it. You know, like the yeah. Buttons. So I know like Rattata because it was in Run <laughs> Rattata Run, and that's that's about it. Um, so yeah. yeah, maybe that's what I'm kind of missing out on. But um, I mean, I, I kind of I'm kind of surprised everyone on the Dimp teams like so behind it because if you look at the game ranking score on it, it's oh, still yeah. really low. Yeah, yeah, it's like 60s, isn't it? It's 
what mid sixties, I think, which is not which is not great. And I think that comes down to because the actual game itself, you are essentially either flicking a ball at a creature, which is fine, or you're tapping the screen to beat a creature. And that's all the gameplay is in it. So to to, to look at it as an actual game in, in terms of its depth very very shallow when you look at it yeah. that way what it preys on and why people get hooked on it and why i know i, I feel this every day i go on it almost is when it rewards you it just chucks at that, it, what it, it, it kind of breadcrumbs it chucks at that little bit of bait where you see one decent pokemon that you haven't got you'll see one a day probably and you'll get him and you'll think oh i'm really lucky you feel special almost yeah or when you hatch a lucky egg that gives you oh, i unhatched a snorlax the other day and i was like wow i'm look at that i'm so far and it preys on that kind of mentality where it makes you feel special. It makes you feel lucky. It's like almost like you win the lottery each time. You win a little like little little prize almost. Well, this is how Hall got addicted to the Xbox achievements, right? It's, like, same, it's the same mentality, you're right, yeah. It's the only positive reinforcement he gets anywhere. <laughs> so he just has to like keep hacking away at them. Um, you know, it was actually quite funny when Pokemon Go first came out. Mm. Um, usually Saturday morning or something, me and... Uh, my daughter and wife go for a walk around the woods out the back of our house. Perfect. And so I thought I'll take Pokemon Go with me. Yeah. Got to the back to the end of the house, mm. and it was like that was the worst walk we've had. You've not said a word. You just had your head down. And yeah. Your... And so everyone's saying it makes them more social and go out more. I think I've actually been less social and gone out less. <laughs> yeah. Time. So uh, that is a good point. You do. You, it's a struggle to do anything other than check it. And yeah. to be honest, you don't really. If you turn the vibrate on, you don't have to actually check it because it will nudge you, but. You always feel like I have to look at it. I don't know why. It uh, goes to sleep and you miss one or something, right? Yeah, exactly. That's, that's, that is the, the real concern. Is, it, is there anything they can do to hook you back in? I mean, I think you're suffering from two things here. One, you never really got into Pokemon, which is a huge part of the appeal for a lot of people, yeah. I find, anyway. And you'd played Ingress a fair amount, so you were very familiar with how that game works. And it, to have something that you're not interested or wasn't, fond of when you was younger come and sort of bastardize it in a way you know that's what it's done it's reskinned it and put all these yeah. little creatures in it's not obviously a good a good feeling when you've when you've been into something that was quite it was groundbreaking it was new ingress was was the only one doing it is there anything they can do to get you back in to even be interested in going back to if they introduce trading or a more strategic battle system or a way for you to battle with your friends and that sort of thing or is it just it's just gone for you now no, I think I think you're right, but I think there's got to be like the casual part of it as well. So say you've yeah. been out and you collected all these Pokemon, you've got to be able to sit on the couch and battle your mates and have a bit of fun with it. Yeah. But, I mean, by the time winter comes around, no one's going to be playing this in the UK. That's the thing. Yeah, is uh, it rained? What day is it rain? It rained on Wednesday on the way in to work on my commute. Didn't get it out because I was well. Just I thought, a, I don't want my phone to get wet. It's not a waterproof one. And yeah. B, I wanted to get as quickly from A to the office, so I didn't have to get soaked. So you're, it is heavily reliant on the weather. Yeah, definitely. Which it would yeah. be interesting to see what happens when, when that takes place. So yeah, you're right. They would need something like a an online battle system. And you look at the success of something like Hearthstone, where you can go tournaments and whatnot. Imagine if you could do that, and it was a little bit more strategic, where yeah. you know maybe you introduce the term base as an option for people i don't know this is something that i think will be needed if you're in a place where there is bad weather or and if you're in an area which doesn't have a lot of poke stops either i can't see how this can be anything but frustrating because i'm i'm fortunate or unfortunate i have to waste my day commuting but going to london every day you know i'm always stocking up on pokeballs i'm always usually seeing a couple of new things every day good as but if you're if you're not going to those places, if your life doesn't have that involvement, then you're going to struggle to pick up the resource as well, which would be a frustration. Yeah. So it's heavily, if you're in a big rural area, for example, you're not going to get the most out of this. I actually done better. Sit, uh, my, my office is right near a Pokestop. Yeah. More Pokemon in the office in the day than I did walking around the woods. Yeah. It's, it's that my, exactly the same. There's a, there's yeah. a Pokestop near mine. You're, it's crazy. Um, yeah, it's such a shame. I think it will get places. And I think with the... You know, with the interest they've got, I'm sure they'll be rapidly developing it. But yeah, uh, yeah, for the minute. Yeah. It, one other thing, one other gripe I've got of it is that the tracking, whatever the tracking they've got on there doesn't work. I, you know, the footsteps to find the certain Pokemon, that that must have switched that off because it's it doesn't seem to work. The the floating leaves, it, it seems very, it seems almost random when things appear. Like yeah. things things will pop up that weren't in the little kind of preview grids on the bottom. And I think, well, what's that doing here? So yeah, yeah. It's, I don't know. It seems like they've not quite got that figured out, but you know, it, it's been. I'm still enjoying it. I'm still playing it. 
and the group is still going. It's got 13 people in it now. Wow. And, and the Pokemon Go group and it's daily usage. So and it's very popular. People are still using it. Um, they... Yeah, I mean, it's great. It is great. The, like the social aspect of it has. You know, there's a lot of people going, oh, my God, you're playing Pokemon. So, like, yeah, just sod it. It's a bit of fun. I mean, that's what's great about it is it's got everyone yeah. kind of excited about something, right? There's enough horrible, horrible news in the world today. Sure. Go and flick some balls up some Pokemon, guys, and have some fun. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's the kind of uh, my idea of it. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Let's move on to another kind of Nintendo-related news segment. Big news leak, rumour, whatever you want to call it, but Eurogamer come in and report some, what they say are NX leaks almost, you know, we don't know, none of this is confirmed, and Nintendo won't change their strategy, whatever day they were going to release the information, they're going to wait and do it, regardless of what's come out here, but Eurogamer have gone on record and said, the NX, it's released in March next year, we knew that anyway, the NX is going to be a portable console with two detachable controllers, but it can be connected to your TV at home. It will use game cartridges like the 3DS, and 32 gigabytes is the recommended size of these cartridges. It will support digital downloads. Suggestion is that there's no backwards compatibility, and the Wall Street Journal, who have piped in in the last day or so as well, reckon that the game will support mobile technology and imply that the t- there's going to be touchscreen on the kind of portable control that you've got. So... It's all a bit, you know, we don't know if any of this is true, but it's, it's people have been suggesting this is the direction they could be going down, you know, a kind of portable hybrid type thing. What are your, let's just pretend it is true, we're going to have to for the sake of this conversation. What are your thoughts on them going down this direction? Um, I, I think, well, I, yeah, I think it's a great move by them, really, um, yeah. especially with their kind of strategy to start doing more mobile games. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think the technology is ready for it now. I mean, mm. uh, we had people around the other day to play Gang Beasts, and we uh, just played that through the Steam Link. Yeah, and we had we had like four controllers in it, yeah. and I couldn't. There was a couple of times where it stalled, and then it kind of started going again. Right. But I couldn't tell if that was Gang Beasts or if that was the Steam Link. Right. So if they do something similar with that, like the base is on a Wi-Fi mm-hmm. or like hard connection, and you've got your controller going um, or your screen. Um, that connects up to your big TV, and yeah. then can like take it in a car, take it on an aeroplane. Yeah. Um, then they, I mean, that sounds like a great idea. And I mean, it's not like any of the new Nintendo games are going to be massively high on processing or GPU, no. No. because there's only so many things you can do with Mario running across the horizon. So, <laughs> like, yeah, like mobile social gaming seems like a great little spot in the market for them. Yeah, and, and to be honest, they they seem to have some sort of voodoo magic with some of the games. They they manage to they squeeze a lot of juice out of the NX when you actually sit down and play their Nintendo developed titles. So I assume they're going to have the same kind of relationship with this hardware. Going to get the most out of it. Um, I think that's why developers sometimes try and stay clear. Actually, is because their mm. guidelines are so strict on what yeah on what the way the system can be used. It's why they kind of end up just having Nintendo release games. Yeah. But apparently they've opened that up as well now and they've released a whole new um, developer portal as well for Nintendo. So hopefully that will, um, you know, that will open that up. I mean, yeah. something like um, there's so many of these indie games now that run so well on low-powered machines anyway that exactly. if it does open up, then, yeah, it could be great. Yeah. I mean, look at some of the, the, the mock diagrams they've given up. It looks very similar to the gamepad. In like it's, a, it's kind of a rectangular shape. It's got analogs, it's got a D-pad, and then four sort of face buttons on there. So you're right. Anything like an indie game will play on that probably fine because they're not they're not big on processing power. You you could play a Gang Beast on here probably maybe with a little bit of a, a button configuration. You you could play an inside on this as well. And um, with the added advantage that you you've got the cartridge, you bung it in like you said. You go where you want if you're going on a commute and you can play it on the go. And then when you come back, plug it in. It's in the telly. And it's roaring off also. I don't know. I mean, I think it's a good idea, personally. Would I be interested in it? I'll answer that at the end. But it, the, the thing is, what they couldn't do, really, and if you look at this logically, everyone's going, it needs to be as powerful as the PS4. It needs to be. It didn't, because we've already got, essentially, and you've alluded to this very early on and gotten rid of your console. We've already got two PCs in a box, haven't we, really? Yeah, you know, PlayStation, the Xbox. There's nothing. They're not doing much different. They are essentially PC hardware in a nice box that's got optimized software that runs nicely on it and will play on your big telly. So, do we need a third one of those in the market? Probably not. Would be my suggestion. Yeah. 
people yeah. people are struggling to pick up both the PlayStation Four and Xbox One. You know, if they can if they can get this into a you know a market of mobile users, that'll be great. But um, handheld, I think, is definitely something that people are willing to do. And the fact that it will double up as a console at home and you won't feel like you're taking a hit in performance, I think, will be a great move because it's something different at the end of the day. I think a lot of people. You know, maybe you're getting sick with the the generation of, of console cycles, and a lot of people do go to PC now, don't they? They need a bit more control. And this will offer something completely different from all three of those. Yeah, and you and it's. I think Nintendo have always been like the family gaming yeah brand, haven't they? And so, like, if you could take this on holiday and you just shove it in your bag, yeah. And you've got, I think one of the pictures I saw is like two controllers come off, or one comes off each side, so you've got two That's controllers. It. Yeah. I mean, that's like. It's like, yeah, it's a party in a bag, right? I mean, you can just, you're going in your caravan, you're going on a plane. Yeah. You know, you've got like a, yeah. I mean, it does really seem like a great idea. Yeah. It's, um, it's how many games they get out on it and how well they execute, I think, will be the success of it. But. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot, of, I've, heard, I've heard kind of rumblings that developers seem a lot more open to this for whatever reason. And if you look at the 3DS, that's probably supported better than the Wii U now in terms of its software. And you'd think that a lot of those titles like the monster hunters for example may make their way to an nx at some point and um, i'm sure there's lots of other games on the 3ds that are a bit smaller that will come on this so it'll kind of be it may maybe it'll cannibalize the 3ds but it will also be something that no, no one else has got out there something that can be considered almost a console because it's, it's going to have the legend of zelda breath of the wild on there that's confirmed to be a launch title and that the scale of that game did look impressive at e3 i thought that was a uh, a different take on on Zelda and the fact that it looked truly open in its its world, and um, if they can get that working on the NX, which they've, they've confirmed they're going to be doing, that to me tells me that, that that system will be all right in terms of being able to produce good games for it. One last thing, obviously, to consider is how much is all this going to cost because you can say what you want about people will will buy it, will buy that. I think if they market this as too too heavy on the handheld side people will not want to pay 300 pounds plus for it will they because they'll feel like they're just buying a tablet i guess uh, a lot of it could depend on the operating system they're running as well because if they went for like a kindle fire and like flavor of android which are obviously great system for running games on now there's so many <clears> great mobile games then potentially you're sending it as a selling it as a nintendo tablet right yeah so, so you can do your you can do your um messaging and take notes on there, browse the internet and play your games. Then, I mean, yeah, we just man. paid like £500 for an iPad Air 2 or something like that. I mean, maybe it wasn't that, that much. Yeah. But, the, you know, it's, you don't really bat an eyelid. Well, you do bat an eyelid, but... If it could combine those features and a gaming sort of system as well, then... Exactly. Yeah. You know, maybe you're right, actually. I never thought of it down that route. Whether Nintendo will open it up that much, we'll never know. But well, we will yeah. know <laughs> if they decide to reveal it. We will. Yeah. That's the great thing about this. One day we will know whether all this is all bollocks or whether it's, it's true. But that's, that is <laughs> yeah. a good point. People do buy tablets for ex what I would consider almost extortionate prices at times. And, um, you yeah, know, I mean, it's, it's more than a laptop, you know. It's Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I was going to get one not long ago, and I looked at the price, and I was like, oh, bloody hell, maybe I won't. And yeah. so all I wanted to do was play a couple of games on it, and I thought, I'll just stick to my phone for now and deal with the small screen. Yeah. But um, if I can get Zelda on there as well, and I can play yeah. Breath of the Wild on the go, which is a, you know, something that I definitely want to play, and I'm, I'm interested. But I, 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 don't, I don't know. I think price point could be a sticky one. But Yeah, and I think... I think um launch titles as well will be oh yeah good. yeah absolutely but if you get that zelda on there and you've got a lot of guys that haven't had wii U's, so i think that's going to be big yeah yeah that is <laughs> zelda's going to be their big seller on, on on day one it's going to launch with it and yeah it's they've got to make sure they get third party support as well because the what has happened to the wii u can't happen with with this otherwise people otherwise it'll only send sell and sell 12 10 million again or whatever it's yeah. sitting at now which probably isn't enough i imagine they're looking for more than that um, I read somewhere that over like the five years that it's been out, there's only been like a hundred third party titles, which is really low. Like if it's all budget, so it's uh, it's definitely not panned out for them well being different on the Wii U. But this is something that I think is a little bit more accessible. That would be my opinion of it. Yeah. But we will never, we won't know, we will know one day 
hopefully soon but the the reveal they're saying will be in september so that's a that's a long old wait long time to wait it could be potentially two months by the time that comes out if it's towards the back end of september and like i said at the top of this i think nintendo will stick to whatever date they had planned because they don't really give a shit to them they'll they'll, yeah. they'll release it when it is and uh if it's like this then we'll get all the details you want and who knows you might find out some more next week it could be one of those stories that keeps gathering snowballs as it goes on and then eventually by the time the, re- the reveal happens everything we already know but we will see we will see i think we'll call this particular one off then mate thanks for joining us on this one. Oh, before we go game releases for next week and also a console release so tuesday the 2nd of august you've got the xbox one s two terabyte console that will be available batman the telltale series episode one which will come out on 360 ps4 xbox one ps4 pc ios and android and live lock on xbox one ps4 and pc all three of those are available on tuesday the 2nd of august friday the 5th of august brings in and closing the week a game called nada very mysterious at all because they've not even given me what systems it's coming out for if you need to get in contact with us or if you want to see what we're up to in the weeks between podcasts head over to dimpdigital.com where you can find feeds of our podcast we can find feeds of our youtube channel and you can that's the only place you'll find our written content um actually going back to written content chap as you actually did an article uh, a couple of months back saying the NX will be a handheld. That was your prediction. I don't want to blow me on trumpet too much, but I did nail that one. You did nail that one. So that is, that is if this turns out to be completely fact, when Nintendo officially announced it, that is one in the score box for you. Um, and you also so that's two, really, because you predicted Pokemon Go would be an absolute runaway success, and it has been. So, yeah, and I also don't like it, so I kind of lost on that one. <laughs> Mystic <laughs> Chappers doesn't always like what comes out, so it means you might not like the NX, that's a shame. Or No Man's Sky, but... Oh, no, don't say that. <laughs> no, not far away, This is, it's got to be good. Oh, I'm going to watch some videos now. Yeah, I'm trying to stay away from it, I want to try and be surprised, but those IGM first that Piper kept waffling about, I, I, I did have a sneaky look at one of them, and I was like, right, that's <laughs> it, that's enough now, and there's, there's like three more to watch, and I thought, hmm... Maybe, maybe. <laughs> That's it for now, though. Game over. It's goodbye from Chappers. Bye. And it's goodbye from me, Apps. Thanks for your time. And ta da. Hello, welcome to the Post Podcast Gaming Lounge. This this is a new segment, and these are going to be uh, infrequent bonuses, if you can call it that, at the end of the, the main podcast where we deep dive into a particular game. Now, different series that we're going to go completely full spoilers. In in the main podcast, I do tend to try, I try my best to refrain from revealing any spoilers in any games, if possible. So it kind of does restrict where we can go with some of our you know, our deep dives into games. This now allows us to, the luxury of not having to do that. You know, we don't have to be compromised by the worry of that. It's not attached to the main part of the podcast. It is at the very end. So if you don't want to hear any specific spoilers, you can still enjoy the the, the normal babble, if you will, without having to flick past things. You can just literally turn off at this point and knowing you're only going to miss one subject uh, about a particular game that's probably been discussed before anyway. So that's the the formalities out of the way. Let's bring into the fold Mark Smith Biff and... uh, we're going to sit here and break down Uncharted for a Thief's End. So, obviously, if you don't want to know anything about that game, we, we might spoil particular things. There's no planned stuff, but we're just going to let it go where it needs to. Switch off now, because we're only going to be discussing that. And, obviously, you've, you've listened to the last hour or so of, of good stuff. But I have to mention before we start talking about this game, Mr. Smith, that prior to its release, in, in classic negative Biff style, <laughs> you had you had almost written it off Uncharted 4, saying it will just be the same as the others with better graphics. How how are they going to improve it? Before we talk about the game, what actually caused these these re- reservations? Uh, just like you say, just negative negative <laughs> Biff in it. Um, 
all it was, it's just that I thought that it was too hyped. Right. And normally when something's too hyped, it don't live up to expectations. The amount of games that we've had that have been like PS4 and they've gone, oh, it's going to be a world breaker. And it, it really hasn't. Right. Um, I just prepared myself for the fail. Yeah. You know, raised in Wakery. And I think that's it's just <laughs> normally, that's what normal people do. But there yeah. we go. Just just kill it off before it's even had a chance to breathe. But So disappointment. Yeah. H- having played the game, do you think these, these reservations were founded or was it... Did it live up to what you was expecting? No, it was. It's. I mean, it's. It's a fantastic game. Um, it. They've sort of. It, I don't know. I've played the Uncharted, the other Uncharted three recently yeah. on the uh, the Nathan Drake collection, sure. and they did feel some of them did feel a bit dated, and yeah. I was worried that it was going to be the same mechanic, but it wasn't. You know, they they updated everything about it, mm. um, and it. You know, it, it played really well, really, yeah. really good. Really yeah. Good. I mean, if it, everyone's mentioned it, and it's, it's worth to touch upon it, but. Graphically, I think this is a stunning achievement. And one of your one of your comments to me as you had this, and you were kind of texting me about he's playing. You said, "I've had to do a double take on some of the graphics because they look like real people." Yep. I'm I'm not exaggerating. Very <laughs> very strong and positive observation there. <laughs> now the dust has settled. Were, is that a slight exaggeration, or is it, is it genuinely when you first played it, it was like Jesus? No, like honestly, not in like the cutscenes mm-hmm. and things like that. I was sitting there and I remember just thinking, is, is that a real actor? Like I know it wasn't, <laughs> but I was sort of in my head. I was thinking this is tricking me. It's got to a point now. I think how much better can they make it without yeah. it actually being a real human? Yeah, like I don't think they can. I mean, the, the, it's the best. It's the best game on PS4 graphically. Yeah, you know that's that's a fact. Yeah, take that all. It is a fact. Yeah, that is. It, it does look amazingly good. And like you say, there's like you said in the last podcast when I listened to it. Um, there's just times where it, it you know, it gives you that opportunity to pan around. It's mm. slow, and you just look around. I mean, there's a little bit in Scotland where you go, and it's all yeah. snow and mountains. I was like, this is amazing. This yeah. is absolutely amazing. And the snow starts dropping down halfway through the level. The weather changes. You can see like the little little wet marks on his coat appearing, where the yeah, where it's like, uh, melting into it. It's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Crazy yeah. good. And it's not even when it's the quiet moments. Because when it's in full flow and it's all kicking off, it it's still very very impressive. Yeah, yeah. There's no, there's no point where you think, oh, it's, you know, it sort of slows down a bit and the graphics sort of take a bit of a hit because of the action. It's, it's always looks good, mm. but I think it's just because you're looking at an environment, like literally an environment, so snow and mountains and yeah. things like that. It just sort of blows you away a bit more than it does kicking someone's head in. I think you just notice it a bit more. That's all. Yeah, like when you're driving around in the jeep, those two sections where you get kind of a little bit of free roam in the jeep in Madagascar, uh, they are. They are super impressive, those bits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the, when you slide down the hills in the mud, yeah, you know, when you, yeah. and then your your jeans are all muddy. It's like, oh my yeah. god, you know, they didn't have to do that. They did. You know, no one would no one would have complained. But yeah, but they did, and it, you know, they're the little differences that make it so much better. Yeah, even like stuff. It's got a mechanic in there where you can use the winch, like the winch on the jeep, to tie around a, a tree and pull yourself up a, a steep hill. If you you grab the you grab the actual winch, you know, clip, and you run, you have to you have to run and tie it around the. Uh, Tie it round the actual tree itself. You can't just press a button and it'll do it for you. So you have to physically run round it. And if you sort of walk two metres down, attach it and leave a bit of slack, the, the even the little hook slides up. You know, it, it retracts, yeah, yeah. slides up to the tight yeah. point. It's just like, why are they... Why is that in there, physics-wise? And you can't, yeah, even like you can't run through the rope either. Even no. though it's wire thin, you have to jump over the rope. It's, yeah, you know things like that. It's, it is so impressive, so so impressive. Yeah, there's, there's gone so much detail, and it's just it's one of the most impressive games I've seen on any any, any platform that includes a PC. Because there are some PC games that don't look this good when the game's playing. Um, and there's a reason why some people call them the naughty gods. So, <laughs> sort of, not not me, but some people. Well, do. <laughs> that's, what I've, that's what I've heard. Sort of a play on words there. But another, you know, before its release, I was looking at the story aspect of it, thinking this could be a bit of a banana skin because for those that don't know, there's a lady called Amy Hennig who's now working, I think, at Visceral Games, working on a new Star Wars game. So look out for that. But she had written or co-written and directed the three previous mainstream entries. And she left Naughty Dog in 2014, shortly after they had started on this. So the game was already in progress. That's the lead writer. That's kind of like the driving force of it. The person who, who's so familiar with all the characters and, and the story arc leaves. There was a there was a cause of concern here for me. Because I was thinking, right, that's 
almost irreplaceable. It's sort of like, you know, losing, you know, the writer of Game of Thrones going, disappearing, you know, and not, and not finishing it off, which is what we're getting with the TV show, funny enough, now. Whether that's good or not, people will make their own decisions. But <laughs> fortunately, we had Neil Druckmann, who wrote The Last of Us, you know, one of your, he solely wrote that bit and he was he co-directed it and this, this fella called Josh Schnur as well and they, they took up the mantle and I think between them, Uncharted 4 is actually the, the, the most well-written one of the lot out of those three previous ones for me personally. Yeah, I would agree with that. I would yeah. say that definitely that is the, it's the, the most enthralling story. The other ones... I've got a bit bored of. Um, but They're good fun, ones... aren't they? Jolly. They're yeah, good yeah, fun. yeah. There's not yeah. much. There's not much personal stuff. I noticed a, a deliberate shift in tone almost. That the stories here were a lot more personal and it seemed like a lot more deeper to actual, you know, human relationships in a way. And that's something that I come to expect. You know, having Neil Druckmann do it, who wrote The Last of Us. And you look at how personal and visceral that game is when it comes to it's actually his story. You can, I can, I definitely notice the change in in tone there. Yeah. No. Um... Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it, like you say, you just you care more about what they're going through and what what the characters are doing than you do on the other ones. It's just sort of a laugh and a bit of a piss take and all sort of tongue in cheek. But <laughs> yeah. th- this is more sort of I wouldn't say hard hitting. I didn't go you know come away from it going oh my god. Yeah, you know, like, but yeah. but it is uh, you know it, you do feel more of attachment to the characters and you 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 do care about you know different things that happen to Nathan and his, his yeah, misses and you know, yeah, you old man Sully. Yeah, that's it. I mean, you look at we look at Neil's most famous project, the writer that was The Last of Us, and you know Uncharted Four had uh, it was a slower burner for sure, but it's a lot more deliberate, and I think that helped. That all pays off. All that slow burner, all that setup at the beginning. You spend like the opening two hours, not really doing a great deal. You know, you just kind of there's a whole level devoted just to you know Nathan's normal life, how he is now, how he's just you know uh, working for that bloody marine company, getting up, you know, salvaging bits and bobs, and you you lose an hour and a half almost just going through that bit. But that all pays off in the end because it sets up the story perfectly. Yeah, you, yeah, you've still got all the wisecracking comedy in there that makes the series a joy to play. You know, there's still the one-liners. Nathan's still a very funny character to be around, but everything felt a lot more fleshed out. You kind of had three layered stories going on. You had, you know, you got the Henry Avery and the pirate treasure bit. You know, that's actually reasonably interesting tracking that down, finding out what the hell went on there. Cause it's actually, you know, quite fucked up <laughs> what goes on with the, the whole treasure part. Then you've obviously got Nathan's brother, Sam returning from the dead, requesting help from his brother because he claims he's been mixed up uh, with the drug Lord. I think his name's Hector Alvarez, Alvarez, Al- Alcazar, sorry. And he wants Alvarez's treasure as a form of payment for breaking him out. And finally, my favourite particular kind of layer of the story is Nathan and Eleanor's relationship because Nathan has retired from the you know the hunting and is seemingly happily uh, living with Eleanor until Sam comes along. Now he then lies and says he's going to go away and carry out legitimate work in Malaysia. He lies to Eleanor when actually he's going back to his roots of treasure and artifact hunting, which he promised he was finished with. So it was, uh, and obviously she finds out, and that creates a very interesting dynamic there. Going back to you know some of the the old the other character that you mentioned Sully, I, this was the only the only character I really felt was left on the sidelines a little bit. You know his, his influence wasn't as pronounced as previous games, but I guess with Sam making his arrival, you know he had to make room somewhere. He's not as he's not as you know in the forefront of this one as he appears now and again. Yeah, he does take a bit of a back a back seat, but. I he's think it was old, the... didn't he? he deserves yeah, a backseat, do you know what I mean? yeah. I don't know how he's climbing up those mountains at his age. <laughs> his health insurance must be for the roof. But um, yeah, I think he had to because the the like you say between these Drake's misses and himself yeah. and his brother, those are the three. If you put Sully in, you know, what's he really got to do with it? Yeah. You know, there's that character uh, that I think I think Tom mentioned it that that the bird that's a mercenary that owns. Oh, thing, I yeah. mean, I, I don't know what the fuck she was doing. No. She just popped up, popped out, and then. Yeah. you know that was that was the weirdest character for me mm-hmm. um at least sully had a few more lines than what she did yeah yeah sully's got a right to be yeah it's a bit odd having her in there i mean she never really did anything like, no. she, she was kind of that you kind of find out her motivation is that she doesn't care about the treasure that's going on she doesn't really care about anything other than you know the contract that she's had with rafe who's like the main villain now i quite liked rafe as a main villain i think he, the guy that played him has done a great job and i enjoyed all of his moments and his dialogue but you know, Nadine, all she does really is own that South African army of mercenaries that Rafe uses and never really develops further than that and then kind of fucks off towards the end. And it's like, oh, yeah, okay. she takes a small box of gold, isn't she? And fucks yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. It feels like a bit of throwaway there. 
I mean, that's a that's a really like brief setup of what goes on in in the three story arcs that I picked out. How did you find that these developed during the actual course of the game? Did it did the story hook you? you said it you said it was one of the better ones for you. Yeah, um, it did. It did hook me. Uh, I would. Di- I, I must admit, I didn't expect the uh, his brother to sort of. And this is a big spoiler to backstab yeah, yeah. him. Yeah. Um, well, uh, that was a real twist for me. I was. I actually genuinely believed that he was out to get the money for this drug lord. And then yeah. when he went, nah, it's all a lie, mate. I was yeah. like, oh right, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I was a little bit disappointed because I kind of wanted this. They build up Hector Al- Alcazar to be this absolute untouchable drug lord. And I was thinking, oh, cool, he's gonna he's gonna pop up somewhere towards the end and cause absolute havoc. And it turns out he's already dead. He's been dead six months. And Sam, <laughs> yeah, Sam Sam's tricked to Nathan to go along on this adventure with him. And then you know, three quarters of the way through, you find out you find the truth out, and Nathan's like, fucking hell, I've been absolutely one. I've had to lie to my wife, who's now found out that I've been not in Malaysia. I've been fucking around climbing up rocks and shit again, which I said I'd be <laughs> off. So she's absolutely livid. <laughs> Uh, and two, my brother, who's supposedly been dead for 15 years, has come back, lied to me, and is only interested in getting the treasure. And that all relates back to like a childhood memory they have, doesn't it? You know, they, yeah, their yeah. mum and whatnot. You find out a lot more about um, Nathan and Sam's mother, and she was actually a, a very well accomplished historian and explorer herself. And one of her first, or one of her only adventures she didn't complete was this, this, uh, this pirate treasure, if you will. So I had a it ties a lot more back into to what had happened in their early life, stuff that they hadn't touched upon before. The only thing that I kind of, you know, if you're going to turn your nose at something, is that there is no sniff of Nathan's brother, as far as I can remember, in any of the three previous games. No, there isn't. Not even. No, a, remember, no, no. I, 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 I mean, I played him recently, and I don't remember Sam being no. being mentioned. He's just come out of the dead. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that that sort of it's all right, that sort of thing. But like you say, there's no. You know, they could do another one and go, oh, this is Drake's sister. And you go, oh, yeah. right, okay, here we go. Take Who else is there? Yeah. yeah. Get your old family tree out. Let's have a look. <laughs> yeah. What's I want every on? stone uncovered. Yeah, exactly. Um, a lot of the times, I think what helps with the way the story was structured, and we mentioned these quieter moments, is that much like The Last of Us, you had a companion along with you a lot of the time. So you had the banter going on between the two, the talking, the exploring, that sort of stuff. I think those help pass the slower times. Uh, and also it help obviously give them give people an opportunity to get soaked up in the story. Did you know it's quite a lot of influence from The Last of Us from this? For anyone, yeah. The last sort of big, you know, game that they'd done. I mean, to be honest, when you said about the uh, the person who wrote The Last of Us, I didn't know any of that. That, that no. information you just told me is all new to me. But I was actually going to say this story felt a lot more like The Last of Us. Yeah. Um, and now you tell me that that you know that makes perfect sense. But it, it does. It did feel. You know the storytelling was so good; it it, it did feel more like The Last of Us. Yeah. It doesn't play like The Last of Us. It's n- nothing like that no. sort of thing. It, the the cover and the shooting system is completely different. Yeah. Um, but it did the storytelling. I mean, the you know Last of Us is probably one of the best yeah. stories ever written on a PS4 game, so or PS3. And uh, you know this this is up there as well. You know, it's just really really good. Just you know, you just care about the characters, and as you play through, you, you care more and more. And then, yeah, you know, you've mentioned the dynamic between Drake and his missus, and how he promised not to do stuff, but then in the Relatable, end, more isn't it for you? Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> But in the end, you know, he wasn't happy with his actual life and he was living a life for her and he yeah. wanted to go explore. And it turns out she was pretty much the same. She, yeah. wanted, You know, so it sort of wraps, you go into the past and it wraps the past up and it goes into the future and sort of wraps the future up. It's sort of an all-encompassing yeah. story that, you know, ticks all the boxes really, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, they call this a thief's end and a lot of people were speculating that Nathan would get killed or something like that would happen. Had this been the last of us in that environment, I would have fully expected someone to die because that's the whole setting of that is just, it's morbid, isn't it? There's death and destruction. Whereas I really, I really felt like if they killed someone off like a Sully or they killed off Ellen or they killed off Nathan, it would, it wouldn't fit the tone of Uncharted. It's although this has a lot more serious tones to it, it's still overall a much more fun and lighthearted journey, isn't it? it would... Yeah. Yeah. It's nowhere. I mean, the, the, the last, uh, the Uncharted series is more sort of an all age group sort of game. Sort of, I know it's yeah. got shooting and killing in it, but it's not. The Last of Us is more Mutual. adult themed, I would yeah. think. Yeah, this it wouldn't feel, it wouldn't have fitted the tone to have someone get wiped out back back off towards the end. Um, yeah, you mentioned briefly the game mechanics and how it plays. You know, obviously it doesn't play out like the Last. There's a lot more action involved. Were you were you happy with some of the tweaks they had made, whether it was to the traverse or the combat or even the introduction to the grappling hook? I mean, the graphing was fantastic. That was my favourite thing. So that was my fun. F- yeah, it is. And, you know, we discussed you can throw the hook 
and then jump. Yeah. Or you can jump off a cliff and then throw the hook. And it's much more fun to jump and then throw it because you'll miss it and it looks yeah. cooler. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that that was a really good uh, thing. I really enjoyed that. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. The, 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 way, the way you move through the game yeah. is just incredible. I mean, there's so many different options you can take to do the same... The yeah, same thing. Yeah. I remember when Tomb Raider first came out, the yeah. the reboot. They said, "Oh, there's going to be so many ways you can yeah. traverse and kill people mm-hmm. and do it different ways." And I didn't feel like it delivered. But this no. didn't really talk that much about it. But it really, it, it there, there is. You could, yeah, you could do it all stealth. You could not. No one could even see you. There were sections I done in the game where I just walked past people. I just got yeah. from one one. I didn't even have to tackle them. And another, you can just, you know, put a rocket launcher up someone's ass and just cause all course of, <laughs> you know, chaos. There is so many ways you can do it, so so many ways, and that that was the main thing that I really liked about it. Yeah, yeah, because the other ones were a little bit rigid. They were kind of like corridors, almost not corridors, but in a game sense, you had to go that way. You had to engage the enemy and you yeah. had to shoot them. Whereas in this, stealth is a viable option. Yeah, yeah, and it, they they tried touching on the stealth system, sort of. Yeah. Uh, in other games, but they didn't really pull it off as well. But this was genuine. I thought it genuinely worked really, really well. I mean, I, there was a couple of times where I managed to go from. A to B and clear out an entire, you know, five or six blokes without yeah. being seen. And it, it, you know, it did work well. It is, it's not perfect. Don't get me wrong, but it, no. it was a lot, lot better. Yeah, no, I mean, it's not like I'm, I'd say Metal Gear Solid levels of no, stealth, no, 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 but near. you can definitely, again, we mentioned it back, but the, the influence of The Last of Us there, there's a lot of stealthy moments in that. that you yeah, could, you, you know, you just want to slowly and slightly work your way through. They obviously learned a lot of lessons from that. Yeah, and, and incorporated that into this particular section i think moving through the environment just felt so natural as well the way that nathan animates the way he actually moves and just touches things around in the way he just scratches it everything is spot on with the way that they move and the way the characters animate and that's why i always say that when this game is so impressive when it's in full flow it's because of all the animations and how smoothly it is and just how just how good it looks and having those open environments for you to explore there's different routes there's loads of collectibles hidden everywhere and you can you could spend an hour in one section just trying to search every nook and cranny trying to find a bit of treasure which i think is what adkins has been doing for the last yeah. month of his life he's <laughs> it's really really cost him now the set pieces in uncharted are obviously they're the main piece you know people come and expect you know a high level of set pieces so We've seen, we saw one of them at E3, and there's a demo going out where you, where you're basically being dragged along the mud, you know, on a truck, and there's bikes shooting you and whatnot. That's one of the main ones. What, what did you think of the level of set pieces in this? <coughs> did they blow you away as much as you was expecting? Yeah, I mean, you know, they 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 were spectacular. Um, yeah. You sort of as soon as one come in, the controller went down and just sit and watch like a little miniature film. Yeah. Um, and you know the one with the the rope being dragged along and you're shooting people that that was fantastic as well really really exciting yeah um it, it, it's just it was, you know just sort of thinking about it now like looking back i just think yeah it was i don't think i appreciated it enough at the time i should no. have been like you know taking ridiculous. photos of it yeah it, it really was um yeah. I'm just trying to think what other ones there were. Well, there's, uh, there's some smaller ones. There's ones where you're driving across the bridge and it collapses and you, the, the jeep ends up in the water and it's kind of like you're getting you're getting flowed down the end of a waterfall and Eleanor gets off and you have to like jump at the end and yeah, grab, yeah. swing rope. Then the fucking branch is going to break. So you've got to quickly swing and get over that. But there's, there's, there's tons and tons of moments in it. And I felt like they were a little bit more interactive than perhaps some of the other ones. You know, typically you would probably see, I don't know, uh, that, that, that mud being dragged one. On, on, on any other game, that'd be a cutscene. That'd be a cutscene of Nathan climbing up the rope, getting the yeah, driver yeah. and getting... But in this one, you're, you're there. You're controlling how you slide, you're controlling your shooting, you're climbing up. But then you're then jumping onto other vehicles to take over and take control of them. I mean, you can really do some interesting stuff there. Yeah. But... One I've just thought of as well is another one with the winch and the Jeep and the Jeep falls yeah. off the side of a building yeah. and you're winched and you're sort of vertically... Yeah, sort of hanging. dragging yourself up. Yeah, I mean that that was pretty that was pretty intense as well. Yeah, there's, uh, there's tons and tons of them going on. There's there's obviously there's a chase towards the end where there's a there's a machine gun bloody van chasing you down. You yeah, yeah, yeah. Jump over things. It's yeah, that was it's a great mad. One. And that's a little bit of a I always find that as a bit of a homage to Crash Bandicoot in that actual level because one of the Easter eggs in this is that Crash Bandicoot a level from Crash Bandicoot is playable. Yeah, in the game. Um, I mean, I thought I actually thought there's a bit where there's mummies and they yeah. explode, 
and there's a scene where the camera is pointed directly at you and you're running towards the camera yes. and they're all exploding. Yeah. I was like, that that to me was the proper, that yeah. was like playing Crash Bandicoot yeah. again. It's like they'd said, you know, you've played the original Crash Bandicoot. Now this yeah. is 2016. Yeah. This is what we can do now. Yeah. That, that to me was a bit of a homage as well. I think they, you know, that was done on purpose. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, let's talk briefly about that little Easter egg. I mean, what a... What a great thing to include. A, yeah. a, a level from Crash Bandicoot to play in Uncharted 4 in 2016. I mean, it's, <laughs> they make you play with the D-pad as well, like, which is how you had to play in the old days. But I was really finding it hard. I could not I could not beat a score for Love Nor Money, although I've heard that you know you can't beat it the first time around. And obviously in the, the epilogue, it pops up again. You can beat it there, which I have. I took, took me a while, but I managed to do it. Oh, I didn't get anywhere fucking near that. No. I don't know what she's doing for a living, but she's... She ain't doing professionally, it. yeah. Just writing, but yeah, what a what a great inclusion that is for fans of you know it's one of Naughty Dog's first ever games and you know a PlayStation flagship title back in the day. So to have that a tribute paid to that particular game. I mean, it. I even like the way that when you started it up, it had the original PlayStation yeah music. logo. Yeah, yeah. It was like, zzz, like yeah. The, I was like, wow, that's so you know. Again, they didn't need to do it, but such a small detail like that just makes it. You think, oh yeah, that's fantastic. I was having a look around Nathan's house because at the beginning I said it's slow pace, so you actually get a chance to explore his house and see what's going on there and look at his attic and whatnot. It's a decent sized house. And I was thinking, oh, that's all right. He's got like he's done all right for himself since he's retired from treasure hunting. He's not like got a mansion or anything, but he's got a decent sized house. Then, when I find out Eleanor's still got a PS1, I think, <laughs> why has that not been upgraded? Put your hand in your pocket, Nathan. Yeah, you need, get, at least get a PS2. Come on. One thing annoys me about that level is that you have to go... She makes dinner. Yeah. It, I don't know why it bugs me, but it did. And she went, oh, I've left dinner on the side. So she's sitting on the sofa. Fucking get it! So she made dinner, left the two bowls of dinner on the side, then walked over to the sofa and went, Nathan, come and get my dinner for me. I was like, no, that, that wouldn't happen in real life. That no. was the only my only complaint of the game. <laughs> That's your only complaint of the whole game, is that Eleanor's a bit of a... Lazy cow. Yeah, well, she just made dinner, mate. Well, oh get the bowls, bring them with you. To be fair, doing? I looked at that dinner as well, and I thought, that does not look appetising. <laughs> it don't look big enough. Like, a dinner for me has got to be on a plate. Not a, it's not like a, a little cup, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's like a saucer. bowl of like fucking pasta. I was like, come on, sort it out. Eh? No wonder he's fucking off doing all sorts of adventures. Like, I'm sick of this shit. <laughs> Sully can cook up a bit of roast in this. Good Christ. One thing we should touch on before we leave is the multiplayer part of it. I didn't spend too much time in this, but for what it was, it's actually quite enjoyable. And I think yeah. we, had, we had the same experience with the last one. So we play. We love the single player game, but the multiplayer itself wasn't half bad either. No, the, the problem is with multiplayer because we've all sort of adults and grown-ups now nice, yeah. trying to get us all together it's, like, it's hard so yeah. a lot of the multiplayer is good but trying to get four of us together at the same time to play it if you play it on your own it's so boring do you know what I mean I, yeah. I just find it so repetitive and yeah. you know and there's people you're playing with and they're not trying to they're just doing their own thing you, yeah. you know fair enough it's up to them but when there's four of you you can actually talk to each other it's so much more enjoyable so yeah. but yeah the, the multiplayer was really good um, again you can do everything you could do in the game you can yes. you know grapple and there's, yeah. there's guns and you can create your own class and yeah. you know it, it is really really good really really good but we, you know like I said it's not going to get a fair crack because we can't just get four of us together at the same time no yeah there's certainly hours of fun to ha- be had there if you've got oh yeah definitely yeah if you can get a group of people together it's really good really good play it. Before, before we close this down any other observations or anything else you'd like to mention about uncharted 4 before we rest it you know until until we do like a retrospective and go wow what a, what a game that was um the, 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 another thing I did like is that with all other uncharted games there's normally some sort of um supernatural supernatural yeah, yeah. Uh, there's like little monsters in el dorado and then yeah. when you went to the, the the second one, I think there's like Yetis or something like that. Yeah. This is just all humans. I, I sort of much more enjoyed this than having that, yeah. that supernatural element that I, I thought, well, where, where, what's, the, what's, what are we getting out of that? That's, yeah. that's mental. Yeah, um, I, I do agree with that. You, you're right. Usually there's some sort of nonsense that happens. You kind of think, oh, okay, I'll let it slide, but I'd rather it wasn't there. Is in this one, there was no. Yeah. I was, bit, I was a bit worried towards the end when you're going down to, you know, Alvary's cave and there's all these mummies and shit. And I was thinking, right, there's some sort of. It's going to have been some sort of ritual that's gone on here, and he's going to be some sort of god or something that's going to come out. That's what I was for. I was, they kept talking about Avery's ghost, and I was yeah, like, if he uh, comes back as a ghost, I'm, you know, that could ruin it for me. That really could. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think again, The Last of Us, you know, sort of realistic, and I think that writing comes out again in this, where it, you know, there yeah. wasn't that childish element to it with the, the supernatural. It's more sort of 
No. You know, realism and, you know, it, it, I think it made the game a lot better for it, not yeah. having that supernatural element. We didn't need the, the you know, by the Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark melting bit to happen at the end. It didn't. We didn't need the supernatural bollocks to occur. And no. they, they resisted the temptation to do that. In terms of a PlayStation 4 game, we've earlier on in the generation, we'd criticised the system for not having enough games, not having enough exclusives. You know, they're not at the same... They're not moving forward in the way we was expecting. They're kind of better but not as we could have had this on last gen i have no doubts that this game is not possible on any platform prior to it you know ps3 is not going to have to run this game the way it looks the way it runs and the poor old ps4 can barely run i don't know about yours mine was screaming yeah yeah mine was loud as well i'm glad you said that actually because mine was making some horrific noises so yeah that p- point five will have to come out soon i think if the games get any better that's it yeah i mean that but this this is one of those those you know benchmark games for the generation, isn't it? You know this is this is what can be done. So everyone else better take a look in the mirror and say, right, need to up our game here, really. But trouble is, yeah. these sort of games are the exception rather than the rule. No, that's yeah, yeah that is the annoying thing. It's sort of Naughty Dog and Rockstar sort of keep the yeah you know keep the level high, but a lot of the other ones they don't. They just no. sort of let it flop and people still buy them. Get the order to come out and go well. Looks good, but doesn't play very good. Yeah. The one question that will be on everyone's mind, and it's not fair, and I'm going to abstain from answering the question properly because I've got my own answer, but Uncharted 4 or Thief's End, is it better than The Last of Us? No. No, <laughs> still not. Still not there. Uh, Disappointing. Just... No, it's not. It's not. But I, I, it was never going to be for me. I prefer the sort of, that sort of adult game, the hard-hitting stuff, than, yeah. than this sort of... You know, in making stupid jokes and oh, wandering around his house shooting like little rubber balls out of a plastic gun and that. I love that bit. <laughs> oh, that was great. It like, was good. He's like a big kid who just couldn't grow up. He was like, right, he's got his little Nerf gun. Can you out. imagine it? You sit, if you were his missus sitting downstairs, you can hear that. Fucking bashing around upstairs. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just shooting my Nerf gun. You'd be like, yeah. oh, fucking hell, Nerf, grow up. Yeah. Little bastard. No, I mean that wasn't a fair question. They are very different games. It's a completely different. Yeah, they are. They are separate tone and uh, storytelling element to it. I mean they are, but they're they're still both very very good games. And uh, I gave it a, a platinum rated game, which I think it truly deserves. Just even if it's just on the tech loan, it would you know you'd have to run some games close. But the fact that it has the package of the story, it has the package of new open gameplay environments and new open environments, stuff that they didn't have to do. They could have stuck with the status quo, but they, they made the effort. It got delayed a few times, but ultimately I think he's going to be happy with it, provided yeah. you're a complete moaner or you just, you're just not interested in them. Yeah, no, no, it's, you know, it's going to be one of the best games on PS4. Yeah. Um, I, I could quite happily say that. By the time the PS4 is finished and yeah. there's a PS5, I reckon it'll be in the top 10. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, I, I think that as well. So, yeah, it's definitely, you've definitely got to get it. Um, yeah. just, just to show the capabilities of what your PlayStation can do. Yeah, yeah, because we was all doubting that and they've, they've just shown people that this is what can happen. Yeah. If, you, if you've got the skill and got the talent, and people go, oh, it's the console's fault. But this Naughty Dog has said, well, it ain't because we've done this with it. Yeah. It's sort of, it's a bit annoying though that the PS4, not annoying, but it's been out for this long. Yeah. PS4 and it's taken what three two years two for someone years, to really yeah. push the boundaries of it and go you know what this is this is what you can do with it and this is how good you can make the game look yeah um, no, I, I agree with that it's a it is a bit of a shame but when they do come along it's always worth the wait it seems yeah when, no when definitely are, when they are this good and we look at Naughty Dog's future it's got to be the last of us too isn't it next yeah yeah the fingers crossed um but again I'm um, I'm nervous for it, you know, because <laughs> it's got to live up to such, I mean, it's the pinnacle of my gaming history sort of thing. So it's got is that to number up. one, is it? Yeah, yeah. It's, the, it's my ever. favourite game. Yeah, ever, ever, ever. I've played that more than anything. And it's not the longest game in the world, is it, if you think about it? No. Uh, no. But yeah, I, I really, really am looking forward to that. The last but I just two. I hope they deliver. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see about that. I'm sure they. I mean, they've not let me down yet. No, no. no. Considering I was someone who jumped on the bandwagon pretty late, because obviously not having, I didn't have a PS3 to play until about 2013. So I made the effort to play through all three Uncharted's, then The Last of Us, and since then I was like, Jesus, it's sometimes like when you look at getting a, a PS4 on Xbox One, it's, you kind of look at these sort of games and go, right, that is almost worth it alone. Yes, yeah. you just there's nothing that the Xbox has had for a while yet that's been able to be on Naughty Dog's level. 
I think the three six uh, the Xbox three hundred and sixty started off stronger, but I definitely yeah, yeah. think the PlayStation by the end of it had over sort of overtaken it with storytelling on games and things like that. Yeah, I agree. I agree, and they, they'll they continue to do that now. We'll see in the future what that holds for Sony, what that holds for Naughty Dog. But Last of Us Two, I imagine, will be announced at some point, or maybe later on this year. You never know. Yeah, they've got to be they've got to be working on something and, and get that sorted. But that's it, I think. Uncharted for a Thief's End. And this is now the end of the very first post-podcast gaming lounge. So, Mr. Biff, thanks very much for joining me to talk about Uncharted 4. It's been a pleasure. No worries. Thanks for having us.